Good morning. This is Bill from Curious Cars on a rather lovely Florida Tuesday. I have to admit it. The weather is actually quite nice this morning. Uh, it's devoid of humidity. The humidity that just offends. Gone. Uh, there's that cat. That friggin giant cat. God, and it's running like a cheetah for God's sake. Thank God it's not coming at me. <sighs> anyway, um, where the hell was I? Nice morning. Clean, crisp, good Florida air, rare you know, season. It's still, again, it should be a little bit chillier, I think, in November. It'd be nice if we got a bit of a front coming through, but uh, I'm going to take what I get, uh, and this is fine. This it feels like, like 72 outside, low humidity, and uh, I did photos of this truck, and I'm not dripping, so that's a giant plus. Uh, before I get into the truck, real quick, I've noticed in the comment section, which I do try to respond to those things, by the way, uh, but I did notice that people are asking again, what happened to Auto Europa? What's with the name? The name's weird. Everything's weird. Uh, real quick rundown, recap for those who are just joining us or those who weren't paying attention. And I can't blame anyone for that. I can barely pay attention. Uh, but uh, anyway, we had a little me and Marty. If you remember Marty from the videos, that gorilla head muscle goofball. Oh, I love him, but you know Marty. Uh, he and I had Audi Europa going, and after a certain point, uh, he wanted to pursue the, uh, the health stuff, gym. So he wanted to get into the gym business uh, because that's the kind of guy that he is. So uh, we split up the company, you know, sort of liquidated the merchandise all very elegantly, and I went back to Auto House of Naples, where I had uh, begun a while before with Peter, great guy, uh, doing fun little bit of collector car stuff uh, on the side of his otherwise, you know, flowing operation. Uh, thus, you know, this kind of stuff here. And uh, it's been great fun. So, uh, but you know, the Auto Europa had become a review channel. I wanted to keep that going. So this isn't the Auto House channel. Uh, Marianne and Peter do have their own videos on that. Uh, this is a channel called Curious Cars, which, you know, suits me because for one thing, this truck wouldn't fit something called Auto Europa. You know, I had to make it more American inclusive. And secondly, I had the name already. I had the website, CuriousCars.com, an eBay account. Uh, it's just something I had around for a long time. Uh, in fact, uh, my friend Al calls it Buy Curious Cars, which makes me very happy. Uh, reminds me a little bit of the uh, great car caller, Bipolar White. But anyway, long story short, this review channel, Curious Cars, uh, is essentially fed by cars that I'm buying uh, and running through Auto House of Naples with, uh, of course, Peter's blessing, and he checks out everyone to make sure it's up to his standards, uh, which, you know, is unnecessary because I already have high standards. I have very high standards when it comes to dealing in some of these used cars. I'm very particular about what I sell uh, because, first of all, I hate selling cars. I hate being a sales guy. It just drives me insane. And secondly, I just, you know, don't want to have any negative stories. So, uh, I'm pretty careful about what I deal with. This is a truck that I drove to North Carolina to buy along with another car, uh, a Riviera. Nice old machines, and uh, we'll get into those now. So there it is. So this is a 1995 Ford F-150. Uh, this is the Eddie Bauer trim package on top of the XLT trim package. Very, very attractive truck. It's finished in sort of a uh, darkish medium blue metallic. It's got a uh, sandy beige uh, two-tone effect at the bottom and the striping and uh, is a very desirable ninth generation Ford F-Series pickup truck. And uh, when I say they're very desirable. They are quickly becoming the hot collector truck, uh, you know, era. The, the, I want to say it's what, 93, 94 through 1997, 98, this ninth generation, uh, because it's the best of all that is old and the best of all that is new, uh, all in one truck. After this, they went to modular engines and stuff that's tougher for the average guy to maintain with a bunch of overhead cams and uh, variable valve timing and that kind of crap. Uh, also, you know, a different sort of less rugged suspension. Oh my god, I'm tripping over crap, naked statues. Uh, anyways, this is a very nice, 
year, a series of years, where, where the trucks just had everything that was good about the old ones and uh, the beginning of the stuff that was going to be great about the new ones. Uh, for instance, this is essentially underneath the same as a 1980 F-Series, not really a big difference. Uh, it's got a modernized body on it, uh, they call it the rounded, uh, well, actually they call this the old style. Uh, because it ran concurrently with a newer style later, but uh, it has rounded edges. It has the first aerodynamic lights that went on a Ford pickup truck. Uh, it uses a pushrod V8, very desirable, uh, which uh, parts are cheap for, performance upgrades are cheap for. Uh, they started to make pickup trucks something more than they were. Uh, they had been just sort of utilitarian workers, towers, farm trucks, that sort of thing. Uh, by the time this car came around, there and Peter's gonna sneak around in the town car. God, I like town cars. We've got a FOMO co born in here. I love that thing. Uh, but anyway, so Ford uh, and other trucks had started to make more luxury models that people would drive uh, in lieu of cars. You know, they, they were moving. You know, cars had moved from these big full-frame things of the 60s, 70s, and 80s to become uh, much less substantial front-wheel drive, unibody stuff that people weren't entirely fond of. So if yeah, somebody who wanted a big full frame ride uh, really had no choice but to go with a pickup truck or SUV and a lot of people did. And that's why these trucks have become the best selling vehicles in United States and Canada to epic proportions. I mean, uh, the F-150 is responsible for like $41 billion of Ford revenue. They'd be completely lost without it. Uh, by far their best selling vehicle. And people use them as daily drivers. And again, you're going to have to forgive me for all the rambling. I, I, you know, I'm going on a lack of sleep. For some reason, I just haven't been sleeping very well. And uh, I am loaded up on the coronavirus whiskey, uh, keeping that nasty bug at bay, uh, using <laughs> whatever is available to me. But so I will continue. And uh, anyway, so this ninth generation sort of combines what's, uh, what's the best about all of it. Uh, the styling is lovely, it's classic, it's noticeable, and at the same time, this thing can be used as a pickup truck. It's not too vintage uh, for a guy who wants a classic truck, but can't really afford to have stuff sitting around uh, to daily drive it. You could tow with it, you could drive with it, you could have fun with it. Uh, it's still usable as a truck, and at the same time, it's got a lot of classic you know, 80s, 90s credibility. So anyway, let's just get into this thing. <laughs> the story of this truck is interesting. It came out of Boone, North Carolina. Sorry, you see, I've got my bag of crap in the back. Uh, there's the original Ford Bedliner, which I don't think Ford makes Bedliners anymore. It doesn't put their name on them. Uh, if you go to get a new Ford truck, I'm pretty sure it doesn't have a Ford logo in the Bedliner, but eh, I could be wrong. I'm not necessarily a truck expert. Uh, but anyway, this thing was sold out of Boone, North Carolina to uh, some sort of strange woman who called it Clementine, or she was Clementine, I don't remember which. It was on this little placard that I got when I bought the truck uh, that the guy was using at shows and whatnot before he sold it. So, uh, But anyway, she wanted the thing to be a stick, she wanted the thing to have a V8, and she got it. Uh, but she didn't drive it very much. I guess she was the wife of a well-to-do somebody. Uh, so it sat around a lot. Eventually, it even got put into a barn uh, where it sat for a number of years. And unfortunately, in that barn, there were birds roosting. They pooped all over the truck. Nobody really paid attention. And uh, it etched into the paint. So uh, the fellow who bought it from them, that family, ended up having to repaint it to bring it to its former glory. There was just no way to uh, retrieve what the uh, poop damage had done to the clear. I'm really hoping to sell the truck. Nothing like poop damage on a truck to make it desirable. Uh, but anyway, it got a lovely paint job. They went through it. They uh, cleaned up the gas tank, the lines, the brakes. They freshened everything up, changed all the fluids, made sure none of the gaskets were leaking. And at the end of it was a very beautifully restored 12,000 mile 95 Eddie Bauer pickup truck. And uh, that's what you're looking at now. They also put new Firestone off-road tires on it, those destination things, which look nice. Uh, the Eddie Bauer was a trim package uh, that was kind of a first at the time. And Eddie Bauer was actually a pretty interesting cat. I looked him up last night because I thought uh, he was just going to be some sort of silly you know, the way Lexus was invented out of whole cloth. I didn't even know there would be an actual Eddie Bauer, but there was. Uh, he was a guy who was born in 1899. 
At the age of 21, he opened up a little shop in the back of some sporting goods shop called uh, Eddie Bauer's Tennis Shop, where he sold tennis rackets and tuned them and tennis clothing. Uh, he also uh, invented the first uh, shuttlecock, the first standard, oh stop it, just stop it, the first standardized shuttlecock called the Bauer shuttlecock, uh, which apparently really standardized the game of badminton and became the standard for the sport and uh, still holds true today. People today are still using this Bauer shuttlecock, stop it. Anyway, that store went on to go to more than tennis, then it became Eddie Bauer's sports shop. Uh, then he went on some fishing trip to Washington uh, State, you know, up in the mountains. He got hypothermia, nearly froze to death. He was wearing this wool clothing that all these sports guys wore at the time, and apparently it froze solid in the rain, and uh, he was nearly dead. So he thought, this can't work. So he. Uh, bought like $25 worth of down stuffing, goose down, and started trying to make parkas out of it. It proved to be too bulky, so then he quilted the parkas. Shazam! It all worked out well, and he made a jacket called the Skyliner, which became the absolute standard for outdoor types to wear. Uh, in fact, that guy, the first guy to climb Mount Everest, or whatever the hell it was, he ended up wearing one of those things. And uh, then the military came along and said, hey, we have a bunch of bombers going over to Germany. They have to fly very high so it's cold. Uh, could you guys start supplying jackets to them? So Eddie Bauer got to work. He made like 50,000 of these uh, B-9 parka jackets for the Allied Force uh, bombers. Uh, to keep them uh, warm when they were up at those altitudes and was also out of like all the different military suppliers he was the only guy uh, that they let put uh, a brand on the parka so you know the guys wearing it knew it came from Eddie Bauer uh, he also made pants and sleeping bags sounds like a really juicy military contract and it obviously made him well to do uh, after the war he you know started growing the company he took on a partner and uh, ended up, uh, you know, doing quite well. They did a mail order business. They sold out in 68 to, uh, I don't know who, and then in 71 to General Mills. And uh, then eventually it just became, uh, you know, uh, clothing for yuppies to wear, you know, guys who couldn't hike their way out of a wet paper bag. So, uh, you know, it just kept going and became a big mom. You can buy like Eddie Bauer tablecloths today and uh, obviously Eddie Bauer Fords as well. So. Uh, the poor guy, I think they really did bastardize his name. Uh, but that said, there's a signature on the back of an F-150. I think he'd probably be happy with that. And uh, the world continues, so. All right, let's just get into this thing. So, you know, this was one of the pioneering luxury pickup trucks. Uh, it was not a thing necessarily at the time. Uh, pickup trucks were much more Spartan. Only, uh, you know, in the mid-90s did they start becoming what they would later become. Oh, God, everything's so hard when I hit it. Really, really is. Okay, there we have this pushrod V8 with the uh, famous Ford frying pan injection on top. So it's an electronic fuel injection. Uh, it's not like Mustang horsepower. It's like 150, 160 horse, uh, but more than enough. And of course, it has V8 torque. So uh, it's not going to shoot your head back in the seat or anything, but it's plenty of pep uh, to get the thing rolling down the road and to overcome obstacles with the four-wheel drive. Just a terrific engine in this thing. And that's made it uh, in this one, which I think is fantastic, uh, to a five-speed manual gearbox. I don't know for sure, but I presume that's got to be pretty rare in these cars. Uh, you probably got a lot of manuals with the six cylinders and the base trucks, but uh, you probably had to order an Eddie Bauer uh, to get a manual and not have the automatic in it. Have a look inside. And all the chrome stuff, you know, all this was Eddie Bauer. Chrome door handles, the special striping, these snazzy looking little uh, stainless tie downs it has, the sort of molded in running boards which look nice, the trim down the side, special Eddie Bauer uh, uh, rims on it, 15 inch alloys, you see the 4x4 with the automatic hubs. Uh, I'm not going to get down on my knees and show you, God forbid, I'm just too friggin old and out of shape for that. Uh, but this has uh, what began as a solid front axle. 
but they cut it in half, put in a uh, slip joint, and made it independent suspension in the front while still retaining uh, the durability of a uh, solid front axle. Uh, of course, that's just in the 4x4 versions. In the two-wheel drives, they had a twin I-beam. Uh, but anyway, the thing drives incredible. I mean, it reminds me of like a 60s Cadillac going down the road. Uh, it's smooth, lovely, and very easy to see how people started driving these things instead of cars. And chrome bumpers, all very nice stuff. The keys out and we see what we got inside. Okay, so in here, and I believe this is optional, there's a, a bucket seat option, which kind of looks like a bench seat with the center part. Uh, but the uh, two uh, front seats do move independently of each other and uh, act as genuine buckets, and I do believe that's optional. Also has a power and lumbar support. Uh, with 12,000 miles, the interior of this thing is just absolutely mint. The leather on the steering wheel is like perfection. Uh, none of the wear, and you know, I mean, these things were okay, and pretty durable, but uh, man, would they take a beating, you know, for something to remain this nice, this clean, this proper, it has to have low miles. Uh, you can see a lack of the wear on the pedals. Uh, they haven't been, uh, you know, shoved and smushed for 200,000 miles. There's your shift on the fly, transfer case control, uh, and of course your uh, gear shift lever. Uh, you have tilt wheel, you have cruise control, you have power windows, locks, mirrors, you got this nice little leathery insert in the door, special trim there in the door. Uh, you've got pockets down here to put crap, pockets here to put crap, pockets here to put crap, so plenty of storage for whatever you need. Just hop in. Okay, you also got a full gauge package with the Eddie Bauer thing, so you've got your uh, your oil pressure, your water temp, your fuel, of course, your voltmeter, uh, your uh, speedometer, and your tack. Uh, all very nice and lovely. You also have a driver's side airbag with uh, cruise control stuff. You got a horn. Nice. Here's the keys. Let's fire this thing up. I'm short, so I got to move the seat forward a little bit. And we got the tattoo setting. There we go. So also with Eddie Bauer, you got this soft dimming rear view mirror. You turn that on and off with that little guy on the bottom. You got these real snazzy looking embossed Eddie Bauer sun visors that are dual folding. So you can pull this off, run it to the side. Then you still got one at the front. So you've got a little fortress of sunshade there. I like how there's uh, also a vanity mirror there. This was the 90s. So you really didn't have to powder your nose like in the 80s. Cough, cough. But... Uh, but anyway, it's there. you got dual-side vanity mirrors. Uh, you've also got a, a radio that had to be supplied by Sony because it reminds me of one I had in the Firebird back in the day. Uh, absolutely identical. I feel like it's a miracle this thing works, which it does. Uh, you know, you got to love the cars. You really do. I mean, what a great old band. Uh, I just grew up listening to the cars. That cheers me up, although that song kind of offends me a little bit. Uh, but anyway, you've got a cassette. I checked it out with a cassette adapter running into my phone. It works fine. Uh, you've got air conditioning, which is ice cold in this thing for whatever reason. Maybe it's just the mileage, but it is freezing. Uh, you got a 12-volt uh, outlet there with this flimsy little cap that for sure has broken off any one of these that got use. And let's just check. I had a feeling. Yep. No smoke in the ashtray. Everything nice. Uh, glove box. You got some papers and you got the original uh, book cover there. Owner's manual. I'm not sure if the 10th gen had this or not, but I love these little smoker vent windows. God, do they take me back to, you know, the 70s or whatnot and the cars that had these things. We had the Beatles and Oldsmobiles. We could aim the air at you with that. I just love it. And if you were a smoker, of course, it was a lovely way to ash, but eh, nobody smokes anymore. It's like a hate crime. Let me get my seatbelt on. Okay, so this little center seat folds down 
And then you've got this chintzy little rollback thing, again, something that I'm sure is broken on most of them, uh, which reveals a couple of cup holders. Uh, then you've got a little compartment here, uh, which has just enough depth, I think, to fit a real nice 357. We were talking about that like a K-frame or something. Uh, obviously, it would definitely fit a J-frame, but I want a big saw. I want it like a Model 27 Smith or a, you know, six-inch barrel Colt Python. Uh, to me, that's a nice spot to put that in. Uh, you got a sliding rear window back there. You got some map lights up there. And uh, again, you know, the way this thing is, it's just so well preserved being a low mileage truck uh, that you feel like you're driving uh, a new one, essentially. Now I know what it felt like to drive a new Eddie Bauer pickup truck in 1995. All right, there we go. Here's the other thing about 12,000 miles, and this isn't necessarily a sales pitch. This is just basically, you know, the stuff that I've found over the years in the car business. You cannot simulate that mileage. I mean, you're talking about all the bushings and suspension parts that Ford put in there. And generally speaking, the OEM parts are of a better quality than even the Ford parts you're gonna get later on. They're not necessarily the same. Uh, so the way that this thing goes down the road is the way it had to be in 1995, uh, which I think is a much higher standard than a way that you could rebuild it today. Uh, I mean, you can buy all those bushings, suspension pieces, whatnot, uh, but if I had to bet in my heart of hearts, I would say it still is incapable of being as smooth and perfect uh, as this thing was in 95 and the way this truck feels now. You know, the tightness of the steering is like factory setting, uh, the smoothness of the wheels and suspension. Uh, you can feel the low mileage when you drive this thing. Let's see how bad the windshield is. And keep going. Those guys have gotten a little better at windshields. I've been working on them. I bought them rags specific for it. Now I'm taking care of the rags. So I think we're making some headway. Still a very long way to go before Dalton is anything resembling a detailer, but at least his windows are marginally improving. Anyway, very fun to shift through the gears in this thing. I love that it's a stick shift. I think that's cool. I love that it's a short bed, style side, short cab, you know, four by four, uh, with a little bit of a factory lift to it. You know, and it hasn't been lifted over factory, but the four by four set higher. Just feels nice. And man, I mean, it's got Cadillac style ride. There's no vibration coming through the wheel at all. Uh, you feel the truck is bouncing a little bit on the road, but the shocks are handling it really nicely. Uh, it has a terrific ride quality uh, that frankly to me rivals any of the big full frame sedans from the 70s and 80s. And uh, I can see why people bought the hell out of these things. Would have been fun to do a little off-roading or something, but the paint's so perfect, I don't want to scratch it. So we're just going to let it be a two-wheel drive thing for now. Uh, but if I wanted to, I could shift. And we have tested it. It does go into four high and low just fine. Uh, I could shift that thing and, you know, drive through these uh, these neighbor's bushes, do a little urban off-roading, as my friend Andrew used to call it. Right, let's see if I can cross-body shift with the camera and see how quick we can get to 60. I'll try not to look like I've never driven a stick before. Yeah, not bad at all. You know, it's not a rocket ship. Again, the horsepower rating is quite, there it is. What was that, like seven, eight seconds? Uh, very, very peppy. Uh, of course, the V8, even without the big horsepower rating, has a lot of torque and uh, definitely is superior in that regard to that um, 4.9 liter 6 that a lot of these came with. That's a great engine, indestructible, uh, but just doesn't have the torque of this 5 liter. Uh, really, really great engine. So. Anyway, there it is. This is a 95 Ford F-150 XLT Eddie Bauer pickup truck, 12,000 miles on the clock. <laughs> and man, it feels it in every sense. Every control, every switch, the way the doors close. Uh, you know this thing has low mileage. You can just feel it. Uh, it's in uh, exceptional shape inside and out. Uh, it's going to be for sale at Auto House of Naples. You can see it on the web at uh, autohousenaples.com or give them a call at 239-263-8500.
Really appreciate you guys having a look today. Thank you very much. We'll be back tomorrow with something else, either a pickup or that Riviera. Maybe. Actually, there's an auction tomorrow, so it might be Thursday. Uh, either way, we'll be back before the week is out with more fun stuff. And uh, thank you so much for having a look. Take care.